Okay. okay. Good afternoon, everybody, and uh, thank you to be with us uh, this afternoon for the result of uh, the IRC, the Innovation Research Competition, through uh, the ASEAN Water Platform Wanasi project. Uh, this is uh, the schedule. Uh, this session will not be too long, I think uh, less than one hour. Uh, my colleague uh, from IRD, uh, Mrs. Margot de Groot van Emden, sorry for the pronunciation, uh, will uh, have a, a short introduction about uh, tools, uh, capacity building tools uh, from uh, the department uh, IRD department for mobilizing research and innovation for development, maybe five or 10 minutes. And after we will go to the um, result uh, to the, this uh, IRC. Uh, so without any transition, I would like to give the floor to uh, Margot uh, for, uh, for a few moments. Please Margot, go ahead. Thank you very much Stefan and thank you everyone for, for being there. Uh, let me share my screen uh, first. Okay. Okay, can everyone see the presentation? Very good. Yes. Yes. Okay, great. Um, so, as you may know or uh, not, uh, IRD is a French Institute for Sustainable Development. So, we have a vast network of research units working together with partners across uh, all continents. But beyond activities, ac activi uh, academic activities, we also conduct capacity building uh, activities. That is training to research and by doing research uh, through the unit I belong, uh, which we call the SRC. Uh, which is capacity building unit in French. So what do we do? Um, to uh, Just in one sentence, we contribute to the training of tomorrow's researchers and scientific communities in and with partner from developing countries. So basically we do three kinds of activities, uh, technical assistance, face-to-face, uh, -face, preferably or remotely. So the icon uh, is very much like uh, like what we are doing now. <laughs> with a, I miss the micro, but still, uh, we do networking. Uh, we network uh, young communities of researchers to the good people and adequate funding uh, that match their needs. Uh, so for that, we mobilize uh, in-house experts and researchers and an extensive community to direct uh, people with uh, relevant international calls and build, uh, build up research training capabilities. And then we also have a in-house uh, workshop, training workshop uh, that we can build on demand uh, and special programs that I'm gonna detail uh, after that. So what we stand for is capacity, build, capacity building for sustainable science. So basically what we have a three step approach to ensure sustainability in time, uh, that is viability and durability of research teams, and sustainability in terms of impact, that is uh, targeting sustainable development goals. So my unit focus on the training part um, with three kind of tools. Uh, so a PhD grants program uh, that we call the arts program, uh, structural training projects, um, to support uh, like um, other institution or research teams and um, cross-cutting uh, training workshop. So for the PhD grant program, um, it targets uh, other uh, current PhD students or would be PhD students um, from partner countries uh, we want to pursue a doctoral program, uh, either supervised or co-supervised by a researcher from the IRD. Um, and what is uh, a bit special from this program is that it requires um, the students to split their time between their um, uh, country of residence and uh, another country. So most of the time it's French, but not, not necessarily. Uh, so for who is this program? Uh, what are the requirements? 
Well, you have to be a master's degree holders um, to be uh, a national from developing countries. And of course, to um, develop um, um, a topic of research that is aligned with um, um, the partnership uh, between uh, French uh, IOD laboratory and uh, um, a research uh, team from your country. So why apply? So, well, um, beyond the, the fact that it's uh, uh, quite an interesting grant, uh, you benefit from uh, an international environment uh, with like super uh, qualified researchers uh, and you have access to the RRD's uh, international network, uh, logistical resources um, and uh, all kind of support uh, in terms of training and uh, and logistical support that we, we we can bring you. So I'm not going to go too um, too deep in details of that. Uh, but the grants are for three a duration of three years, um, and you get uh, all the benefits with it, uh, such as security, travel allowance for up to one trip uh, per year. Um, so. I'm gonna just give you uh, the, the agenda uh, if you are interested to uh, apply. Um, and then I'm gonna shift to another program which is mostly uh, aimed at um, a bit more uh, senior research teams, uh, which uh, aim to contribute to the training of uh, students, academic staff, researchers, engineer, um, with the, the goal of really straighten uh, research institutions in our partner countries. Um, so the, the program is pretty flexible, but uh, it can either target uh, support to institutions. Uh, so that means uh, helping to build uh, or to consolidate graduate doctoral schools and colleges uh, or to design from scratch sometimes. <laughs> Uh, research training curricula. And uh, we have more targeted support to special research teams. Uh, so you can apply if you want to uh, organize a regional uh, uh, training workshop uh, with colleagues from other countries or uh, a summer schools targeting specific skills, uh, thematic. Um, and uh, it can also support, uh, especially in this context, uh, the acquisition of uh, digi digital tools and equipment. Um, next, so how to apply? Uh, it's basically the same calendar for um, this project. For the arts program, the, the first requirement, you need to find a physics supervisor from one of IRD laboratories. Um, that could be in joint supervision, like I said, uh, with uh, a research from your country. Um, and then you could uh, design um, uh, for this project to be sure that uh, you know, leverage on what they're already doing. Um, and for a PSF program, uh, it's like building international uh, consortia. Um, that is uh, what you have to do before drafting a project. And all the applications start from July to September, then we select from September to November. We analyze the results in December, and uh, by January, hopefully, you get um, all the, um, the financing and you can start uh, the project. Uh, and finally, a special um, touch from our team is uh, that since uh, like for 10 years, we organize workshop uh, at their on demand or in discussion with uh, our partners to identify the special needs. Um, and uh, once a year, in order to be sure that all this kind of transfer of knowledge is sustainable, we organize a training of trainers so that uh, our trainers be king the trainer in their countries. Uh, yeah, so that's. Um, Something a bit, a bit special because uh, we know that uh, in the current context, we ask everything to scientists, uh, like, like scientists to be superhero. Um, so, well, we know that uh, researchers are just human, but what we are trying to do is 
to make sure that the next generation of researchers uh, develop more cross-cutting skills. Uh, uh, that is to be able to um, join research with uh, uh, multi-actor uh, teams. So this workshop can focus on more academic skills like uh, writing a project, um, writing scientific articles, uh, citation, but also other hard skills. Um, how do you use like image and science? How do you write a policy brief to promote your research? Uh, and where the soft skills uh, to make sure that you, you will be a perfect uh, team manager, um, that you get a, a smooth uh, management of your future PhD students. Um, how do you communicate with the media and uh, yeah, promote uh, research with like uh, companies or the civil society? So that is a quick fight. If you're interested in getting uh, the presentation, I can send it to you. Um, so, so far we have currently 122 arts recipients, uh, uh, about 18 person from Asia Pacific region. Um, and uh, for the uh, PSF project, uh, we are currently 27 projects ongoing um, and including five in the Asia Pacific. And as you can see, it's pretty like, uh, we have a balanced share of uh, support to research teams or support institutions. And uh, yeah, so I'm just waiting for you to apply. Um, thank you very much. And if you want to get more inside information about this action, you can uh, go to our websites over there. Thank you very much. And uh, now I, I give you the floor back, Stefan. <laughs> Thank you, thank you, uh, Margot, for this uh, introduction. Uh, so you will, you, we will uh, put uh, this um, afternoon session in our website, so you will be able to double check and read again the Margot's uh, presentation. And uh, I'm sure if you contact uh, her, she will be happy to share uh, this information and maybe more uh, about uh, the different tools IRD uh, uh, proposed for capacity research and um, capacity building and uh, research in the Southeast Asia. Um, okay, so we can come back to the IRC uh, in, the, in the three country, in the three uh, one country. country. It was the first time uh, for us that, to organize uh, this um, event uh, from the Vietnamese uh, jury uh, side. It was a real pleasure uh, to share uh, and to learn from you, uh, your uh, proposal. Um, in total, uh, for the three countries, we uh, receive uh, 14 uh, proposals, uh, six in uh, Cambodia and eight from uh, Vietnam. Uh, to be frank, from Vietnam, we receive only seven but we include one from uh, Thailand, from uh, Chiang Mai University. And uh, we built a jury of three uh, members. Uh, Alexis Drogoul, who is, the, as you know, the representative officer of IRD in Vietnam. Uh, uh, Emmanuel Panier, who is a socio-anthropologist at IRD based in Hanoi, and, and myself. Uh, but I don't want to start with uh, Vietnam today. And I would like to hear more about the result from Cambodia. So if Margot, you can uh, share with us the result from uh, the, the Cambodian jury and maybe introduce uh, who uh, was in part to evaluate uh, the six candidates. We will be happy to hear you and not only me, I'm sure. Yeah, um, I don't want to, uh, to misspell the, the, the name of the other juries. Um, so maybe um, someone from the Cambodian team can help me in the, like better introducing uh, the other jury members. Um, There's Mr. Kong yeah, from Yeah, thank you. There's Mr. Kong from uh, ITC. Yeah. 
And that it? Uh, and uh, the second one, uh, that. it was, uh, let me check that because I was not involved, but I will fill, I will. Okay. It's Mr. Dina. Yeah. Okay. Dina and Kong was. And we had a third, uh, third one. And yourself. Yeah, okay. another one can can join us today because he was uh, he's yeah. busy this uh, afternoon. But maybe can you you can start with uh, by sharing with us um, how how did the jury work and um, yeah. So I, just, I just want to add, uh, over the 14 candidates, uh, we have only, unfortunately, I hope that uh, next time uh, we'll be able to uh, select more uh, laureates. We, will, uh, we have only five research grants, uh, two for Cambodia and three for Vietnam and Thailand. Just to explain how the things uh, was organized, I, uh, last week. Please, Margot. One, one more second, because, I'm sorry, but it changed, uh, it was changed compared to the, our last announcement regarding the, the award. Before we have only, uh, we had only two uh, awards for two winners, oh, sorry, three for three winners of each country. Now the budget, uh, the, um, the, financement, uh, the financing has been changed. Maybe Stefan, you want to you know, talk a little bit about that, uh, about the, the grant for the first plate and the second place? Yeah. Uh, it wasn't announced uh, before that. We have five research grants. Uh, so two for Cambodia and three for Vietnam, Thailand. Uh, the second and third laureate will receive 1,000 euro. And the first one of each country I mean, Vietnam jury and Cambodian uh, jury will receive a grant uh, of 1,500 euro. <laughs> okay. Okay, Margot, we cannot wait. Who is uh, the, 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 the laureate? Okay, um, so should I introduce a bit, how did we evaluate uh, yes. uh, the winners? Yeah. That because so, we do the same uh, way to evaluate in Vietnam. So if you can introduce. Okay, great. So we have based the evaluation on uh, different dimension. Uh, the first one is uh, based on the, the, the region project. Uh, we evaluate the, the quality of the project that is whether it uh, stroke and up to, did it, did it add an up-to-date literature review? Uh, was it provided well targeted and complete answers. And then also we also evaluate the candidates based on their communication skills, uh, because like I mentioned, it's part of the superhero scientist uh, skills. Uh, so was the candidate able to you know, provide a well-organized and structured presentation? Was, it, was he or she able to provide uh, accurate answers? And, and of course, on innovation, so the third dimension, because uh, it was the uh, innovation research competition. So when I mean innovation, it could be uh, either from the, the methodology uh, and tools that have been uh, mobilized. Uh, was it relevant to the existing research landscape? And also an important component is, uh, was in trying to involve a kind of interdisciplinary uh, component. So was, it was uh, the candidate trying to discuss uh, and to involve uh, methodology from other disciplines? Uh, and finally, uh, the last aspect was, uh, of course, the relevance of the project to local development issues. Um, so uh, that is, the, was uh, the project able to uh, uh, be uh, framed within uh, um, broader uh, development context and to uh, consider future collaboration with uh, non-academic partners. Uh, so, well, um, after that, we I really wanted to thank and congratulate all candidates. Uh, we had a great pleasure in reading, listening, and reviewing your project. And uh, we really appreciate all the effort uh, you have put into it. 
Um, so we also have noticed efforts to adapt to different format of presentation, short and long, which is not a minor achievement in the current context uh, of remote interactions. Um, so if like candidates want to have like more uh, individual feedback, uh, do not hesitate to uh, come back to us. We, we have some uh, personal remarks. Um, so I'm going to tell the the winners for uh, the Cambodian uh, representation. So I'm gonna start by uh, the, the second laureate, right? Yes. Yes. Uh, yes. Mrs. Srilavet. Yes. Are you there, the, the one that uh, the second place from Phnom Penh? Are you there? Yeah. Yeah, we can hear you. <laughs> <laughs> we can see you. You say uh, her name again? Uh, can you hear me? Yes. 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 Congratulations. Thank you. Congratulations. Congratulations, Thank you. Thank you. So, uh, presentation from Cambodia, right? Yeah, please introduce yourself one minute and share with us uh, your proposal. So, let me see my slide first. So I start my presentation now. Can you share with us first? Um, did you know about the result first or you just know it right now? And how do you feel? I'm really happy. And I like at the beginning, I really nervous because it is the first, uh, the first time to join the competition for me. And I really happy to avoid this. Uh, There's a convener and I got experience and new knowledge from this uh, competition. So is this a surprise for you to get the second place? Yes, uh, uh, I am like uh, really happy to avert this. Okay, great. For the first time and winning the second place is really a huge achievement. So congratulations again and please uh, start your presentation. Thank you. Yes. Uh, Good evening from Cambodia. Uh, good evening, uh, all participation here. First of all, I would like to introduce myself. My name is Vasila, and currently I am a fifth year student in Department Border and Environmental Engineering of Faculty of Hydrology and Water Resource Engineering at Institute of Technology of Cambodia. And I am really happy to join the World Asian Water Platform uh, 2021. And especially, I really happy and appreciate that I can avoid this uh, like competition. And um, I really happy to presentation about my research proposal and my research topic is about development of electrocalculation reactor integrated sedimentation for turbidity and color removal from industrial wastewater. And as you know that Cambodia is a developing country and industrial sector is play an important role in the uh, developing in the Excuse me, Srila, we can see your slide. You see your my slide. Yeah, yeah, yes. Yeah, I see already. No, because you choose to share your screen and not your presentation, so you need to start sharing again. Sorry. It's okay. It's understandable, uh, especially when you just know that you just got the second place. Yes. Now you can see my slide. Yes. yes, thank you very much. Yeah, yeah. Let me uh, continue my presentation. 
And as you know that uh, industrial effluent wastewater contain a high amount of color and tubility contaminant. And if we discharge off those wastewater from industrial, especially textile and dyeing operation, uh, paper production, food processing may add a sustainable, substantial colorant uh, to water in the receiving water. As you can see in the picture, if we discharge those uh, wastewater from textile industrial directly into the seaway system or water Water body, it will uh, affect to the water quality of water body, especially it will affect to the uh, aquatic life. And by the way, there are many types of uh, wastewater treatment method to treat those wastewater, such as electrocalculation process, calculation, calculation process, advanced oxidation process, as well as membrane filtration process. By the way of my research proposal, I chose the electrocalculation process to, uh, for this research experiment. And I will detail more about electrocalculation process in the next slide. And let's move to my objective. My objective of the research is to develop a combination between electrocalculation and separation process together in a continuous system for color and tubility removal in terms of treatment efficiency and economy. And let's move to scope of work. Uh, the first one is to design a new continuous electrocalculation reactor involving between electrocalculation process and sedimentation process. The second one is to evaluate the treatment performance in the reactor on dye removal with the varying liquid chloride and current density. And the last one, after we get the optimum condition from dye treatment, was then uh, validated for tubility treatment and board contamination because as you know that color, it had to remove the tubility. That's why we uh, decide to use the optimum condition for dye removal to validate for tubility treatment. And as you know that electrocalculation process is found as the effective wastewater treatment method as it can be able to remove a variety of pollutants, treat virus industrial wastewater, and especially the performance of EC process uh, can be improved significantly in combination with separate separation process. And I chose this method to treat the industrial wastewater because uh, according to my literature review, I found that electrocalculation, it provides more advantages such as it easy to operate and maintain. One more thing, it does not use chemical and it can be form larger and stable flock. And one more thing, AC process uh, produce less slack than another uh, method and one more thing it will provide higher treatment efficiency and of my research experiment the reactor consists of two compartments uh, the big one is a response responsible for sedimentation process and the dimension you can see in the slide and the small one is responsible for electrocalculation process because we combine two uh, two tanks in one and uh, for the wall uh, experiment, we will uh, varying flow rate, uh, uh, three, tap, uh, three different type of flow rate, like uh, one liter per minute, two liter per minute, and three liter per minute to find the optimum condition in this uh, experiment. And about experimental setup, I choose the electroplate like uh, aluminum electrode because uh, According to my literature review, they said that uh, aluminum electrode will provide more efficiency than another uh, electrode like iron. And I use DC generator to uh, connect the power supply. And here is my uh, uh, reactor and here is the whole uh, system that I uh, will conduct for my uh, research experiment. And one more thing, uh, Spectral photometer journeys uh, train SUV with model with limitation in a wavelength range 119 to 1100 nanometer and class Garrett 10 nanometer will be used to measure the color. And for tubility, uh, I will use a HI. 98,003 model was select with limitation less than 1,000 NTU for the measure the tubility in the uh, experiment. And 
The last one is about expected result and time frame. Uh, after we complete the uh, experimental, we will obtain the uh, result. The, the, the first one is about obtain the best configuration and operation condition for wastewater treatment. And the second one is understand the internal mechanism in a reactor of uh, optimization purpose. And the last one is uh, the maximize the color and stability removal efficiency from industrial wastewater treatment in both EC reactor and settling reactor. And here is our time frame. We will conduct the research experiment is about six months and, and you can see in the slide. And uh, that's all of my presentation and thank you everyone for paying attention of my presentation and thank you so much. Thank you. Thank you very much. Okay, <clears throat> maybe we can uh, come back to uh, Margot. Margot, are you with us? Margot? Your microphone, maybe. Hello, Margot. Margot, do you, you have a. Her microphone is off. Her microphone is off. Your microphone is off, yes. Hello, Ria. Hi. So we will not know the first winner then. Who is the first winner? <laughs> we cannot oh, play. Come on. Okay, That's Margot, because of Mar you... Margot. <laughs> Are you having a problem? Maybe she has technical. Oh, that, yeah. Okay. yeah. I think it's connected now. Yeah, the problem is the monitor. <laughs> Sorry. Okay. All the, the, the waiting. So now that we had this kind of suspense moment, uh, the winner. Uh, for the Cambodian uh, session is Bate Munira. Yes, good. Yay! Yes, yes. Uh, thank you. Uh, Can you introduce a bit about yourself and then give you give us a, a brief introduction of your project? Yeah. yeah just uh, to thank yeah, you. Thank you. Yes. Uh, first of all. Of course, I'm really excited for this uh, for this grant. Really, really excited for the first winner. Of course, this uh, moreover, this is the, the first uh, competition that I have applied, and uh, I really not expect that I can uh, get this award. Okay, so uh, let me share my presentation. Yes. Uh, uh, I am Munirat Sophia or Watay, Master Student from Institute of Technology of Cambodia. Uh, so very good afternoon, everyone. Welcome to my presentation on prevalence of antibiotic resistant Aeromonas SPP and Echeraca coli in aquaculture system in Cambodia. Uh, all of you can see my slide, right? Ah, okay. Yeah, 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 uh, you can see it. Okay, uh, from the... Uh, Precious uh, input from our jury, our Cambodian jury, also uh, Margot. Have this, uh, have, I have jumped to this uh, second presentation, which is categorized to four different parts. The first one is background, following by problem three, objective three, and very last one is my research milestone. Actually, aquaculture play an important role or critical role in contributing to the improvement of daily livelihood of farmer community, especially in rural area. Yes, and moreover, aquaculture is known as the farming of aquatic micro aquatic organism, including fish, stream, octopus by individual, or can be group or corporation using intervention that enhance the production to respond to the consumption demand from a, from a population growth. Yes, uh, in addition, 
aquaculture divide to the floating uh, there are there are variety mm. practice of fish aquaculture which is include floating cage pen culture pond culture and dry fish culture and also other fish culture which is connect to small water body those respond to the advantage of fish aquaculture system there are some remaining problem which is include occurrence of antibiotic resistant bacteria and their resistant gene in environment and in aquaculture system so what caused this problem the first one known as the availability use of drug in fish feed and cure fish disease the non-consumable feed and also waste from that fish will arrive or we're receiving at the sediment and surface water as well. Those, the residue exert a selective pressure altering the sediment microflora and environmental microflora. Moreover, bacteria develop the gene encoding the protein to resistant the antibiotic and start quickly transfer to the other cell. So what is the effect of this problem? Yes. Outbreak of multi-resistant gene, which cannot be treated by existing antibiotic, a grown number of untreatable infection, and a problem of uh, treatment duration. Moreover, uh, the significantly concern or globally concern related to the antimicrobial resistance that can affect anyone, any age, and any country. And this problem growing straight to the global health, food security, and development today. Even there are some remaining problem, but there, there is always a way, right? There is always a solution to minimize the risk. So from this project objective, which is include determine of antibiotic susceptibility of detected colony, evaluate the species isolated from two, three different type of uh, sample that include water, sediment, and also uh, uh, fish sample, and quantify antibiotic resistant bacteria isolated from two dominant species uh, two dominant fresh, uh, fresh water fish species and two main, two main aquacultural practice in Cambodia will be impact on the providing scientific funding for human high risk assessment and address the appropriate amount of antibiotic use for fish treatment and can be discussed on of the enrichment antibiotic resistant bacteria in which aquaculture type, which one is the dominant of uh, antibiotic resistant bacteria. Moreover, as uh, policy maker, key person, key person and uh, relevant stakeholder can refer to the scientific finding, the scientific result for further research or making related policy for aquacultural practice, especially monitoring of aquacultural system uh, quality and its environment as well. Yes, uh, yeah, this is the research my, my research milestone, which is include com commitment, academy, integration, and encouragement. Of course, I commit to conduct the experiment to finalize the report and submission of report as well. Uh, for the for the academy, yes, I confess that this uh, project is for my master degree, for graduation, and for publication as well. But there is there is not only for academic purpose, but the integration uh, to the relevant uh, field as well, like availability that of research data for assessing relevant field can assess to this uh, scientific finding for further research and also encourage to apply the appropriate practice in fish aquaculture and further research to complete the existing gap like especially uh, for officer who currently work at the uh, fishery administration may refer to uh, part, uh, may refer to the scientific finding for regulation decision for appropriate practice uh, uh, for our farmer community as well. Yes, so that's all of my presentation, and this is a really great honor to join uh, Innovative Research Competition 2021 in Asian Water Trade Forum. Yes, thank you so much. Bravo. Thank you. I hope you can sleep tonight. <laughs> <laughs> on the joy that you have today. Thank you very much. Good job. Very good job. Thank you very much to, to both of you. Okay, let's uh, come back to uh, Vietnam now and Thailand, jury. Um, I would like to call for a research grant of 1,000 euro, Mrs. Nguyen Thi Tum and Mrs. Nguyen Thi Tu from the Vietnam Maritime University. Yay! Bravo! 
Please turn on your mic and uh, introduce yourself and tell you how you feel right now. And then a short presentation of your projects, please. <laughs> okay, I can see it. You can't stop laughing now. <laughs> Congratulations again. Where are you? We can't hear you. We can see your smile, but we can't hear you. Happy face. Okay, good. How do you feel? <laughs> um, we cannot hear you. We just yeah, congratulations from all other people. <laughs> <laughs> She's now overwhelmed. So I give you, I'll give you her a few minutes. Okay, uh, or you start right now, please check, or we would choose another winner. Oh, yeah. <laughs> We still can hear you. How about change the winner? Do we still yes. have opportunity change for the Adam? winner. <laughs> change the winner. <laughs> I agree. <laughs> idea. Then we không nghe được chị ơi. We cannot hear you. It must be the Zoom technical issues. No, I think there's uh, something uh, happened with her computer or something. Mm. Okay, turn. Uh, try to uh, fix fix the the problem, and we will go to the the second winner for one thousand uh, euro research grant. Okay, and after you will you will you will uh, come back to us. Okay, so I would okay. like. Ah, uh, uh. is it okay, Chitamai? Can you start? Am I chạy lên phòng anh được? You cannot hear. <laughs> you cannot hear you. Come on. Okay, we have another contestant from Vietnam Maritime University. If you can start, you're having problem with the with the computer, then we might choose the other one. Okay. <laughs> Uh, try to. Thank you. <laughs> Congratulations, Thank you. Okay, maybe to, we, to uh, check to check the micro entry on the Zoom left. Okay. On the we, low we, left we need the we need uh, we need two seconds uh, from CMU uh, from uh, from my university. Yeah, yes. yeah, we can hear you. Okay. Okay. <laughs> okay. 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 Um, Congratulations. How did you feel? You. I'm very happy to hear the result. <laughs> yeah. Can, can okay. you see my slide? Yeah. yeah. We can we can hear you and we can yeah. see your slide, but yeah. please, I just received um, a message from uh, Chiang Mai University and they, they have over there uh, some technical uh, issues. Uh, so maybe uh, wait and double check <laughs> from your side uh, the, the technical yeah. aspect of your presentation. But uh, we have to maybe wait uh, one minute, a few seconds from uh, CM CMU to to, um, to to and wait for them. Can you hear me, Kanchana? We can hear you from here. Hello, hello, Stephen. Okay, can, can we start the presentation, Kanchana? Yes. Presentation. Yes, okay. we can start huh? presentation. Okay, okay. So, uh, Mrs. Stern, please. Yes. Yeah. Go ahead. Come on, come on. Okay, I start now. <clears throat> yeah. Uh, good afternoon, everybody. 
Um, my name is Nguyen Thị Tâm from uh, Vietnam Maritime University. Uh, I'm very sad to join you in the, uh, the Asian Water Platform. And um, I'm also very happy that uh, our proposal has been uh, considered and uh, recognized. Uh, and uh, my partner is here with me, <laughs> uh, Ms. Nguyen Thị Thu. Yeah, and uh, uh, so now uh, on behalf of our research team, I give a brief uh, presentation of our proposal. Um, yeah, uh, my presentation has uh, five parts. Um, introduction, uh, research question, uh, methodology, uh, objectives, um, research schedule, and expected results. And um, uh, as you know, uh, metro is an important ecosystem uh, providing uh, people with uh, many, many ecological services, uh, such as uh, carbon storage, uh, coastal protection, uh, providing food and uh, energy to coastal communities. Um, however, according to, to FAO, uh, from uh, 1980 to uh, uh, 2013, mangrove uh, forests in the world lose uh, from uh, uh, 20 to 25 percent of their area, um, and the highest rate of uh, deforestation as in uh, developing countries. And um, in Vietnam, uh, the area of mangrove declined by uh, 35 percent uh, from uh, 1983 to uh, 2012, and then um, resulting in the increasing vulnerability of the coast, uh, as well as the reducing the availability and accessibility of uh, mangrove resources to support <coughs> livelihoods. And um, uh, that herb has uh, 415 hectares of mangrove. And um, the main local livelihoods are aquacultures and uh, wild fishing. Uh, however, uh, that herb has uh, leased uh, a tidal flat and uh, mangrove for uh, ground farming uh, and shrimp, crab, and uh, fish raising. And then it helps to increase the income of some households significantly, uh, but uh, reduce the, the natural fishing area for the uh, poor people. And um, as a result, uh, the, the gap between uh, rich and poor uh, is uh, expanded and uh, there's no support uh, for the low income people. And leading to unsustainable economic development and uh, in the future, it will uh, cause uh, negative impacts on uh, the management, <coughs> conservation, and uh, use of natural resources. And, um, and moreover, agricultural activities uh, in mudflats and in, uh, in the mangrove have caused uh, water pollution. And, um, and some, um, uh, some natural fishing methods, such as uh, uh, using electricity, uh, explosives, and uh, small signets, um, uh, they are the disruptive fishing methods and um, causing the degradation of the fishery resources. And um, uh, the degradation in uh, quantity and quality of the main group cause negative impacts on, uh, on livelihood of the resident. And um, uh, in order to deal with the above, see, with the, with the above situation, uh, we come up with the research question is um, how to better manage the extraction of the uh, mangrove forest in uh, that hope commune uh, kiến thụy district hải phòng city and um, uh, the general objective uh, of my research uh, is um, reduce the destruction threats to mangrove forest in that hope commune by assessing the the applic applicability of a core management model and um it requires us uh, to carry out the, the following specific object, objectives. Um, the first is uh, to evaluate the specific roles of uh, mangrove for the local communities. And um, the second is, uh, investigate, is to investigate, investigate the uh, readiness of the local people in the car management model compared to traditional model. And the last is to propose and develop an action plan to apply common measurement model for mangrove in the uh, study area. 
And um, in terms of uh, research methodology, um, to collect secondary available document, uh, we have um, a desk reviews and um, uh, uh, and uh, with the use of uh, uh, some tools uh, of the P PRA methods, such as the uh, key informant interview, household interview, uh, questionnaire for target uh, groups and group discussion. Uh, and then uh, we use the SWOT analysis method to evaluate the uh, chance um, weaknesses, uh, opportunities and, um, and threats of uh, applying the uh, the code management models. Um, uh, based on the analysis, we will propose a suitable model for the uh, study area. And um, yeah, uh, we plan to implement this project in the first six months of uh, 2021. And uh, this whole uh, schedule uh, is so in the, in the table as you can see on the slide. And um, uh, by uh, doing this study, uh, we expect to uh, uh, apply an uh, efficient and suitable communism model for mangrove forests in uh, that hope commune. And um, in the long term, uh, we hope that there will be benefits in terms of uh, environmental quality improvement and uh, uh, resource protection, as well as um, may bring many economic benefits for local people. And um, about is uh, all I want to share about our research. And um, many thanks for your consideration and uh, comments. They really helped us uh, uh, to better our proposal. And uh, thank you everyone for listening. Thank you so much. Thank you, bravo. Thank you, Tom, and thank you for uh, this uh, nice uh, research project. Okay, can you hear me, everybody? Yeah? Yes. Yeah, okay, good. Uh, for the, as a term, uh, for the second place of this IRC 2021, I would like to call Mr. Kang, Huing Kong Kang from Kanto University. Thank you. <laughs> Thank you, Stoban. So please uh, give us a few words. Uh, yeah, uh, thank you. Thank you so much for uh, for inviting me. Uh, and like, like this is an uh, unexpected uh, result to me because uh, I come yeah. to yeah. this uh, competition uh, just to like uh, disseminate my uh, research <laughs> output because uh, you know that we uh, we have come from different background and, uh, but actually related to water. And so um, to let people know what we, what we are, uh, what I'm working on. And so uh, we can have uh, like some kind of uh, networking and collaboration in the future. And uh, yeah, I will share my, uh, uh, sorry. Me? Uh, Stefan, you should uh, say something. Me or Khan? Uh, sorry. <laughs> Stefan, please turn on your mic and tell us uh, the result. I call, I, I, I call uh, your, your colleague from CTU. He just, he just uh, said a few words. Wen Kong Khan. Wen Kong Khan? Oh, sorry, it's not mine. <laughs> Yeah. yeah, yeah, it's why I was a little confused a few seconds, but uh, I, I <laughs> yeah, sorry. No, but anyway, uh, we, we can, <laughs> they will have a future collaboration, no, no problem about that. And we will organize a new research grant. So, but the second place of the for, for this year is uh, Mr. Uh, Wing Kong Kang. Uh, the research proposal is uh, harvesting and using rain for rain, rain water. For daily activities, for the poor in Kanao students, okay? Sorry, Hana. Yes, yes, okay, good, please. Yes.
Okay. So uh, thank you very much for your choice me for the the ace winner. So uh, on behalf of my precious mama, I would like to introduce the harvesting and using land water for daily activity. I I just source for the poor household in Kamal City. Uh, in the Mekong Delta, so uh, they divided to create the zone in the Mekong Delta to the plus zone. Uh, the plus zone in the upstream of the Mekong Delta and the grass water zone. And in the above the SC, uh, it's the zone, the slight influence zone. It's about here. In uh, the Mekong Delta, so have uh, two seasons. So the dry season from uh, November to April and the wet season from the May October. So, but in the dry season, so some uh, several coastal growing in about the, in the Mekong Delta, so of lack of the fresh water for daily activity. And, uh, beside that, also the some growing also the the surface water were polluted and salinity. In the 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 Kamal city, so now it affected uh, heavily it affected by the climate change. So in the right uh, season, so the the somehow can need to buy the the fresh water for daily activity. So in my objective to want to have the poor want to have enough the rest water uh, using in the the right season. So in my research questions, you have the two. So the first the to assess the potential of rainwater harvesting for the historical rain phone data from monitoring officer in Kama City. And then I will build a rain phone harvesting model for at least one poor house on in the Kamal city and methodologies. So um, in the uh, uh, 2015, so more than the 2000 household lacking waste water in, uh, for daily activity, uh, I will uh, conduct, uh, I will be conducting uh, my research in the uh, the Fulton Liches, uh, so rare household were like of the rest water for daily activity in recent year. So my uh, project to duration so six months from the March, uh, so especially in this, this month to September. So we can see the, the, the Mekong Delta, the mark and this study error. Me. Uh, in my uh, research, I also have the three chapter trees, so the first chapter tree, so assessing what uh, possibility of rain or water harvesting in the study area. So the firstly, I will collect the daily rainfall data at the monitoring officer in Goma City from uh, 2015 to the last year. So, and beside that, I also reference from the paper or report of uh, departments and then I will be meeting with the local government official to collect uh, some information about uh, lacking water situation. And then I also interview household in the Fulton district and start a commute. Uh, just a uh, volume of the water producing every day or the number of the ton for the storing the rainwater and beside that also the surface and raw water quality, etc. In the chapter three, two, I will uh, build uh, the water column model. Uh, will be developed to uh, simulate the water fluctuation in the water yield process for daily activity and give sustainable solution for different purpose when they are uh, using the rainwater for the, the drinking or the cooking or the washing or all of them. So in the 23 too, uh, we'll be based on the information from the interview household such as the 
amount of water for daily activity and the total uh, volume needs to use uh, in the right season. And then I will de design the sustainable site for the rainwater uh, store aid. In the 2023, it's the main purpose in my research uh, projects. So I will be building the uh, rain pond harvesting model for poor household. So I will provide the material to the poor household for the storm in the water and to you and minimizing negative impact on the lack of the water. So now in the, the poor household, they, uh, I will design the, the harvesting the model and, um, and then I uh, will collect uh, and storing in the tongue. But in my uh, research uh, project, I will develop the tongue and especially I want to develop to the bit tongue. It look like this. And I need to use the machine for remove the accent or some of the heavy metal. And then for the rinking or the, 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 for the farmer. And this day about a uh, particular model harvesting. And uh, I believe that in the future, uh, my research uh, projects will be expanded for the other growing, not only in the Kamal city, but also in some growing as my Mekong Delta. So thank you very much for your listening. Thank you very much, uh, Fang, for this <laughs> presentation. And I'm sorry for the mistake, but uh, yeah, yeah. Uh, I have to learn my Vietnamese again after 20 years. You know, I uh, don't feel good. Uh, but anyway, nice project, nice research uh, proposal, and uh, congratulations to you and to your team for uh, for that. Okay, uh, now without any uh, bad pronunciation. Uh, I would like to invite for the first place award uh, Miss Nguyen Thi Thuyet Mai from the Guadet Academy of Social Sciences. Congratulations, Hello. Mai. Thank you, thank you. Oh, now I'm so sober. I'm still nervous now. Um, <clears throat> yes, let me share my screen first. Uh, introduce a little bit about yourself, Mai. Yes. Uh, hello, everyone. My name is I'm from Graduate Academy of Social Sciences. And um, this is the first time I, I, um, I applied for um, competitions. And I'm really surprised when I win um, a award. Uh, my research, um, um, my research is uh, migrations in response to environmental change. A case study in Guangdong province. This is the first step. Uh, I researched for my my intent. I intend to apply for my PhD. Um, um, no, I, I will not apply for my PhD in the future. So, uh, this uh, research is the first step of my research. Mm. And. And now I will uh, start my presentations. Share my screen first. Try not to cry. Yeah. Can you see my screen? Yes. Yeah. Yep. Um, um, <clears throat> now I, uh, I will present it. Yeah, my research, my research topic is uh, migrations in response to environmental change. A case study in Spompi province, and um, as you know that, uh, uh, it is says that migrations uh, is often misperceived uh, uh, as a fuel to adapt to the uh, uh, changing environment. Environment, however, is one of the main coping and survival uh, mechanism that is available to those affected by environmental uh, degradation and climate change. In fact, we have witnessed a lot of um, um, uh, un, uh, 
in um, increased entered, uh, rate of natural resource uh, natural disaster in uh, currents in many countries around the world um, as a um, as a consequence uh, natural um, disaster get um, uh, in this uh, displacement uh, has been uh, recognized uh, as a global issues and Vietnam is one of the countries uh, inspected uh, a lot by uh, by natural disaster and um, extreme um, uh, extreme events, uh, it can be seen that um, natural disaster and is uh, and uh, uh, extreme events can destroy the crops and is 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 harmful for livelihoods. And it is the reason why some people consider to migrate uh, mig uh, migrate to another. Uh, uh, place you know, to have a better life, and in in Vietnam, there's in Vietnam some people you know, they are research about you know, um, the relationship between migrations, environmental and climate change, but um, uh, but they are not focused uh, on um, the um, on the, um, uh, the uh, on the local scale, especially in the central region in Vietnam, uh, which is um, most uh, vulnerable with flooding um, and uh, a dr a drought in those areas. So my research, um, so my, my research uh, site is focused on uh, uh, focus on the Guangbing province. Um, the Guangbing province is still the uh, issue uh, situated in a uh, monsoon uh, tropical zone and in it is included by the climates uh, from the north and the south and uh, this place is one of the 20 um, most hazardous of, uh, province in the in in vietnam uh, which is affected by uh, very earth hazard including floods floods uh, tropical uh, storm typhoon and droughts and these hazards have a significant impact uh, on the province economic natural resources and likelihood uh, populations and um, the truth the trick I choose to research on that on that uh, is uh, and twin is uh, have the long you can see that uh, on slide that is in uh, in the in the south of the province uh, and it is uh, have a um, of course, the long coastal and it, and that split is affected uh, um, by um, uh, by a lot of the um, the flood and the Tuyen Hoa is the north of uh, province and um, the droughts uh, uh, happen to live place in uh, in that province. So Tuyen Hoa and Lai is uh, selected because uh, it is present for two kind of disaster affected to the Guangming province and. Uh, with that, with the reason, uh, with the, uh, with the, uh, it's my, it's my uh, objective. I would like to, um, to uh, uh, that is so I would like to clarify the effect uh, of the environmental change to Guangdong province, um, in province. And uh, uh, I have some, so, um, some of the sub uh, uh, objective is the first one is. Uh, create, uh, cr uh, to clarify the relationship between migrations and environmental change in Guangdong province. And the second one is uh, identify where is environmental migration go to. And the next one is define the migration code by uh, code of vulnerability. And from that, I, I would like to uh, to recommend some solutions to reduce migra uh, migration flows as well the resilience in uh, environmental change. And uh, from that uh, objective, and I give some research patterns and hypothesis. Uh, each hypothesis, each research patterns I give uh, re uh, correct bondings uh, and hypothesis. Um, the first uh, the first research patterns is. What is the pattern of migration uh, uh, have been uh, observed today in relationship in relation to the environmental change in Guangdong province? So the hypothesis is that uh, there is some uh, discriminable uh, environmental signals in uh, 
migration today. As the next one question is, what is the drivers for migration is from growing? So the high hypothesis given is that environmental de um, de degradation is pushing is a pushing factor effect to the economic and social factor leading to um, migration decision of the people of the peaceful. And the third um, question is who is the most likely experience uh, environmental out uh, migration um, pressures? Uh, so the hypothesis is that the groups who live uh, whose uh, uh, livelihood depends on gen uh, genetic uh, species, ecosystem diversity, or, um, and other climate you know, sensitive resources and vulnerable, uh, vulnerable and society um, groups are likely to experience the increased uh, migration pressures. And where, where, uh, where um, and the question about the way, where have the environment, uh, where the environmental migra migrants in public buildings go to. So I suppose that uh, uh, the uh, major, majority of environmental migrants living in the area of which climate, uh, climate sensitive uh, resource uh, migrate to the city where they have plenty of work and less natural disaster. So the next question is, what is the migration cause vulnerability, uh, vulnerabilities for people, for the people? So um, it is supposed that migrants are often to face difficulty in accepting health, housing, education, and employment. Mm. And it's, also, it's not only um, effect to the people who are um, migrants, it also to uh, it's like to the uh, to the communities, to the sending and receiving uh, communities. And through that, um, I get the, the one research question is uh, what we can do to reduce the migration flows. So the so the hypothesis is that some um, possible, uh, possible solution to can be submit for uh, resilient in environmental change. Um, uh, to achieve the um, to uh, to uh, to replies for that um, uh, research questions, I use two kinds of methodologies. The first one is qualitative approach, and the second one is a um, qualitative approach. Quality, uh, quality, with uh, um, qualitative approach, I use a survey sheet with the structures questionnaires for whole host uh, around to uh, two hundred whole host. We be um, will be conduct to capture the demographic details, um, climate trends, perceptions, likelihood, dynamic, and risk management strategies, um, um, migration uh, behaviors as well, uh, well-being um, outcome, uh, which determine the relationships between the mi uh, migration and uh, the environment, and the with the qualitative approach. Um, is um, is aim to um, is to aim uh, to contribute a more uh, uh, depth and deeper understanding about the com the com the complex environment changes um, and migrations. Um, it's also to uh, um, in that uh, qualitative uh, approach. I will talk. Um, I will divide to kind of the uh, the aspect I I will follow is the first one is. Um, is uh, uh, I will ask information about the migra migrations and um, and beside I also ask some information uh, the positive about the um, uh, uh, the, the environment change in that area and the reason why exactly the reason why they are changing uh, they are decide to migrate and. Uh, since they migrate, some uh, something, uh, some uh, effect. What is the effect to um, their life? I mean, they, how they live, um, what the, uh, the living conditions they they are uh, they are experience. And um, with that, uh, with the qualitative approach, I will introduce the uh, communities, uh, the little community, 
uh, the people who have the knowledge more about the community and the migrants as well. The, the people I will approach in the cause of qualitative um, data is the people who are in migrant, uh, who is um, migrate in the cities or and the people who are migrate out of the city. And with that, I, uh, the result I, I hope that I can get, is I have enough uh, evidence to improve that uh, there is um, um, the linking, the links of uh, things between the migrants and environmentals in Guangdong province. And uh, I can find out, I can find out the, uh, the drivers uh, for the mig uh, driver for the migra mig migrations in Guangdong province. And I also to hope that I can find out the more destinations place for the migration in Guangdong province and the vulnerability caused by migration in Guangdong province. From that, I can I hope that um, I can give them some solutions. Uh, suitable solution uh, to deal with the, that impact of uh, environmental uh, induced uh, migrations. Uh, with the products expect, uh, with the products I hope I um, uh, expected product. I I am trying to write to um, paper. Uh, the first one the vulnerabilities of the environmental induced migration is from the province and wanting um, a gender approach to uh, um, environmental migration in Spanish province. With that project, I intend to do in um, uh, 18 months, uh, including the public time. So that is all my presentations. Thank you for listening. Thank you much for your presentation um, and thank you everybody uh, on the winners. On the candidate, I have to say that uh, you deserve uh, the prize, everybody. <laughs> well, that's not cliche, but it's true. I heard from the jury that um, on the, you know, the, the candidates um, are so, so good that they, they, that it was really tough for them to make the decision. So, Okay, um, because uh, Stefan cannot join us right now, I would like to again thank all of you for your participation. And um, also to the winners, we would like to say that um, uh, we have everything, uh, you know, the prize and everything is, is thanks to IRD. Uh, thanks uh, for the, that we have the, um, the budget and have the opportunity to, you know, to organize such an uh, inspiring and interesting competition. So thanks again, IRD. And we have here the representative of IRD, uh, Marco. Thank you. Thanks to you all and for the Thanks. great pleasure. And uh, let me know Bill, if you want any information. Uh, I'm in charge of Gavis the building for the Asia Pacific and I will be glad to help you in um, applying to uh, any kind of program I introduced. Yeah. And uh, also uh, a small notice uh, to all the winners. Uh, please note that um, in all of your publication related to the selected project proposals, please add the logo of IRD and of course the YRC project. Um, and uh, it's the end of your project. Uh, I'm sure that you will have some publications. So please also other from the logo of the IRD and the YRC project, please. Um, uh, insert uh, the name of IRD and wanna see in your thank you uh, for the beginning of your publications. And uh, for the grant work, I would like uh, to announce that uh, the first place um, prize uh, is uh, 1,500 euro and the second place is 1,000 euro. And I uh, will uh, contact you shortly uh, regarding the, the transfer of the uh, award. Okay, I think that's everything. And uh, I wish you all the very, very good uh, continuation. And please don't forget that we'll have the restitution tomorrow morning with the same link of Zoom at 9.30. All right, thank you very much for bye your bye. Yeah, thank Congratulations. You. Thank you, so you Margo. Yeah. Bye-bye. Bye-bye, everyone. I'll see you tomorrow. See you tomorrow. See you tomorrow.
Well, Zipang, I cannot be tomorrow. <laughs> it's too early <laughs> in France. No, you have to. Okay, Emma. Okay, Emma. Okay, Emma. Enjoy. Enjoy tomorrow. Chúc mừng Mai. Chúc mừng Mai. Chúc mừng Mai. Ôi, em thề. Quyền tăng là làm được chuyện trong đó. Chuyện riêng ra chỗ khác nói nhé, không có thể thuốc gì đấy. Chào cả nhà.